merciful graces, ever long suffering Heavenly Father, my sovereign King. Your people have come to this encampment. No words of men are of any value, Lord. For it's only your words that has power to transform. We come before your throne, Lord, with your Son's blood, boldly asking and pleading that you pour your Holy Spirit with rain of abundance, we may be able to hear your voice, to understand your voice, enable us to surrender to that voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Unmasking and destruction of barriers to our perfection. I hope everyone has a handout. We're going to fly through this today. And at the end, we're going to find out how many barriers you heard and if you found out the solution. So hopefully, you can write fast, listen easy. And we're going to go. You see, the subject of perfection, whether humanity can ever attain, it has at times been hotly debated. And yet our Creator and Redeemer says, Be ye perfect. Even as your Heavenly Father said, I believe it is surely by the direction of God to the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that we spend time setting forth to the world as free Seventh-day Adventists. That we believe God has provided all we need to be transformed by Him through His way in our lives. My entire life, the first time I hear, remember hearing this quotation, which is also on the back of our program. It was probably about 10 years old. And it goes like this. When the character of Christ shall be perfectly reproduced in his people, then he will come to claim his own. Yet today we find Satan has placed barriers to entangle God's people, making it impossible to attain perfection without these barriers being destroyed. You see, I've heard laity proclaim that so-and-so, he's a leader of the God's church. He's a godly man. But he has openly and publicly admitted that he is not gaining the victories over sin. So why should I be concerned with it? my character? Just like the days of the prophet Samuel and King Saul, God's people are questioning God's word. When the leadership is not fully surrendered to our Heavenly Father. Jeremiah 17, 5 says, Cursed be the man that trusts in men and maketh flesh his arm. You see, far too many of God's professed people are living under this curse of trusting in the arm of flesh. We trust the arm of flesh with self justification. Oh, when it's our pet little thing, we can justify everything. And then there's self-preservation. You see, if I get out far enough in the country, and I get off the grid, 
I'll be safe when Sunday law comes and really is divorced. Sorry, the Bible teaches you very clearly that the whole world is going to be involved. And unless you've got an idea of getting off this earth before the Lord comes, you're going to be dealing with the Sunday law. Yes, sir. Yes. Then there's self-exaltation and self-centeredness. And then we come to the one that I think most Seventh-day Adventists at one time or another is guilty of. Speaker worship. Speaker worship. Oh, we love to go to meetings. You see, how many of us are here this weekend because of the speakers? Or did we plan on being here this year, last year? You see, I say it this way. Unless you plan on being here before the speakers were announced, you're worshiping speakers. And you're not worshiping God. This camp meeting is every year, the last weekend of September, as far as I've ever known. So you ought to reserve the last weekend of September always to be on Red Top Mountain State Park. Amen. Amen. It don't matter who God puts in the pulpit. Amen. It matters that you're here. You see, far too many professed Seventh-day Adventists are chasing after men than seeking God's will. Whether it be of self or trusting in association, trusting in anything of man is taking ourselves out of Christ. But God then says, blessed is the man that trusts us in the Lord. You see, throughout Adventism, many are allowing Satan's influence So that they will question some of the very core views of Adventism and the original foundation because Jesus has not returned. You see, they claim the prophecies given by God's prophet must be re-examined and even changed because surely Ellen White must be wrong. With more than a hundred years have passed since she said that the deities were soon to close. And yet, even in this spiritual chaos, God's people has given God's viewpoint. God's prophet has given us God's viewpoint. The first time I saw this, I go, whoa. We may have to be remain here in this world because of insubordination many more years. And then she goes on and she says this, but for Christ's sake his people should not add sin to sin. Charging God with the consequence of their own action. You see, when you say, God delay, God delay, God delay, you are not accepting responsibility of your own insubordination of why God has not returned. How in the world do you think you can go to heaven when it was insubordination that threw Lucifer out? How can God let you in with his coordination? The prophet of God makes it clear. Don't accuse God of delay. It's your own insubordination. It's our insubordination for the delay. You see, the question every professed seventh day evidence should be earnestly, fervently pleading with God. If you've never seen the quotation until this morning, start today. Show me, Lord, where I'm guilty. Show me, Lord, where I'm guilty of his support nation to your sovereign will. You see, I submit to you today 
that the vast majority of Adventism from the highest of leadership to the newest member has rarely, if ever, asked God, what is it in my life that is in subordination to your sovereign will, Lord? For generations, we as Seventh-day Adventists have lived and died, and yet can we say, are we progressing? towards God's character reproduced in our lives more than it was five years ago. Get on your knees and ask him. You might be surprised at what he tells you. I pray you'll be continuously looking for victories in our lives for without these victories there will only be losses. It will bring us face to face with the reality we have never been born again. Ephesians 2.8 For by grace you are saved through faith. And not of yourselves. It. Our saving faith. We've got to know what these pronouns mean. And these, all these little words. Otherwise, we've got a problem sometimes with our theology. Right? This it is our saving faith. Is what? The gift of God. We learned about that last night, Pastor. Let's never forget it. Romans 3 22. Romans 3 22. The righteousness of God, which is. Faith, by faith of Jesus Christ unto all upon whom they that believe for there is no difference. The question we have to ask ourselves why is there no difference? You see that's why Romans 3, 20, 3 23 comes next. For what? All have sinned come short of the glory of God. It is not faith in Jesus that will save you. Get this. Never forget it. It is not faith in Jesus that will save you. Now there's some Adventists that go, huh? What did he say? That word in is extremely important. Because the faith in Jesus will not save you. Because that's your faith in Jesus. But the faith of Jesus Amen. in you Amen. is unto salvation. Romans 4.20 He, Abraham, staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief, but was strong in faith, giving glory to God. You see, we've got to understand what it means to believe. Because the devils believe and they're, they're going to go burn in hell. So just belief doesn't mean anything. You better make sure it's the right kind of belief. So you can live in eternal fire and not die in it. If you don't get that one, we got a sermon on that. <laughs> Verse 21, Paul continues. And Abraham being what? Fully persuaded. That he, who's the he? God. God was had what he had promised. He was what? Able to perform. So why do we stagger? Because of unbelief. That's correct. Are we firm in faith? That God will accomplish His will in us? Do we really love present truth? Is present truth being assimilated into your daily lives? Or is it just a profession we hold to publicly? Especially on the seventh day of the week. You see, we must assimilate present truth into our lives. My wife is a dietitian. I didn't marry her and get fat. I was fat when I <laughs> married her. 
and I'm losing weight because I'm married to my wife. And let me tell you something. She can make the most colorful, appetizing, <coughs> delicious looking food. And you go wonder, and you want me to eat only this much? <laughs> but you see, the fact of the matter is, I can acknowledge that it has good nutrition. Yeah. I can know for a fact that that is what God wants me to eat. But until I assimilate it into my body, it does me how much good? No good. <coughs> no good. Present truth must be assimilated into our spiritual life daily. We're talking about unmasking and destruction of the barriers to our perfection. And the prophet of God says, the honor of God, the honor of Jesus Christ is involved in the perfection of your character. So how many times this past week, how many times have you, have you already done it today? Said, Lord, Lord, I want to bring honor to your name, not disgrace. You promised that I can be a blessing to those around me, but I know the honor of everything of the universe you promised is in the perfection of your children, Lord. I want that. I want to bring honor to your name, Lord. Daily we must be seeking to be so surrendered to him that by the power of the Holy Spirit we can bring honor to his name. As an Haskell, seer of Patmos, says this, character alone, character alone is the basis of the sealing work. The attention, I love this part, I love this part, the attention of all of heaven is directed toward this sealing work. For when it is over, oh, they want it over. They want it over more than you do, because otherwise we'd already be there in heaven. The plan of redemption is completed. You see, how much time do we, in our daily devotion, spend seeking God's character, seeking God's view in our character, you see, remember, all heaven is charged with the sealing of God's people. Yet, do we see heaven's work? You see, we must be individually asking ourselves before God, can we testify that we have taken every practical advantage to all He has given for our spiritual health? Prophet of God says this, Review and Herald, February 14, 1899, with great truth, we have been given the pri privilege to receive. We should, and under the Holy Spirit's power, could become, what did she say? Channels, living channels of light. Oh, I could tell you a story, but I don't have time. And she says, we could then approach the mercy seat and see the bow of promise. You see, you see the bow here. But there's another bow around the throne. Seeing the bow of promise kneel with contrite hearts. Have you seen that bow of promise kneeling? And seek the kingdom of God. And what does she say? Oh, when I saw this for the first time, I go, wow, Lord. Why did you put that in there? I've never heard of grabbing hold of salvation with spiritual violence. My heavenly father is advocating violence. Spiritual violence that could bring its 
own reward. Violence, spiritual violence that God through his prophet is calling his people to participate in. Are we daily keeping our minds on what God is doing for us? Now, will everyone who is professing to be a Seventh-day Adventist please stand? Please, everyone, don't, don't be shy. We won't bite you, we won't shoot you. Now I'm going to ask a question. And when I ask the question, I would like everyone to answer it at the same time. There's a reason for this. You'll find it out. What day is it today? Uh, my members were right. Everyone who said it was September 27th, please sit down. Everyone who said it's Friday, please sit down. The answer is correct or wrong. <laughs> Everyone who said it's the preparation day, please sit down. Because that's not God's way of looking at it. <laughs> now for those that are standing still, what day is it today? Day of Atonement. Correct. That is a good answer and thank you. But that's not what I'm looking for. <laughs> Can anybody else? Amen. The, the great antitypical day of atonement, and that's why he said it's Sabbath. Amen. Please sit down. <laughs> you see, there is another answer of what day it is. Because every day since October 22, 1844, it has been the great and typical day of atonement. It is no Sabbath. Every day. And then on the seventh day of the week, it's God's high Sabbath. Now, if you don't understand all that, we've got some DVD packs in the back. After my wife gets done with her presentation, we'll make them available. You see, we've got to understand, we aren't really assimilating present truth if we aren't remembering it's the Day of Atonement every day. Because the Bible is clear. If you are not cooperating with the antitypical Day of Atonement, Every day of your life, you will be cut off, and cut off means eternally lost. Is it serious? Are you serious about the perfection of your character? Then you better be a cooperating with the antipical day of atonement. You see, to love present truth means that it is imperative. It is imperative that we never forget God's view. Today, every day that we live is a day of atonement. The prophet puts it this way. We are living in the antipical day of atonement. Jesus is now in the heavenly sanctuary making reconciliation for the sins of his people. You see, without this mediation of the high priest, Jesus Christ, it will be impossible to gain perfection and live our lives in Him. And then she continues, signs, this is Signs of the Times, May 29th, 1884. It is no time now. Oh, well, she brings out that and she says that. And this was in 1884. What about now? It is no time now to allow our minds to be absorbed with things of earth while we give only occasional thoughts to God and make but slight, slight 
preparation for the country in which we are journeying. We gotta understand this is serious. When we allow anything in our lives to absorb our minds so that we forget that we are living in the day of atonement, it must be removed from us. We can profess a faith in the power of Jesus. And yet if we are not cooperating in the duties God has given us during this time, we will suffer the penalty of eternal death and there will be zero exceptions. Why do I say that? Because Spirit of Prophecy, Volume 4, page 269, makes it clear. Those who by faith follow Jesus in the great work of atonement will receive the benefits of his mediation in their behalf. But those what? Reject. Who reject the light that brings forth the view of this ministration will what? Not, Not benefit thereby. What are the benefits of the work of Jesus Christ in the most holy place in heaven in your behalf? It's the perfection of God's people sealed never to be overcome by temptation throughout eternity. Revelation makes it clear the proclamation at the end of the day. He will say, he that is unjust. Let him be what? Unjust. unjust still. He that is righteous. Praise the Lord. I need that. Righteous still. You see, are we really practically applying present truth? Or is it just merely a profession? What is it in your life from God's viewpoint? You see, there is to be a people fitted up for translation whom Enoch represents. They are looking for and waiting for the coming of the Lord. The work of preparation for this event will go on and all who cooperate with Jesus in his efforts in their behalf. And we must ask ourselves the question, are you, am I, living in insubordination to the work of Jesus Christ up in heaven? You see, she continues and, she, and the prophet says very clearly, the work A theoretical knowledge of truth is essential. But such a knowledge will what? Of this truth. Will not save, will not save you. Our knowledge must be practical. Amen. God's people must not only know His will, but they must what? practice it also. Many will be purged out from the number of those who know the truth because they are not sanctified by it. The truth must be brought into their hearts, sanctifying them, cleansing them from all earthliness and sensuality. And then uh, she ends this sentence, and I'm telling you, wow. Because she says, in the most private life. Don't ever forget when you shut the lights off, God's still there. You can think he's not, but he's still there. You see, every secret, every secret act, it's as if it was in the presence of God and holy angels. 
as all things are open before God, and nothing from Him be hid. Could it be as God's people that we have become so insubordinate against God because we choose never to allow Jesus to come into our innermost life's thoughts, motives, and actions? You see, the subject of the antipical day of atonement has been ignored by the majority of ministers and has caused a direct negative effect of completion upon God's people, the work that He wanted to accomplish. It is only as we look at the sandbox of our salvation. Can anybody tell me what the sandbox of our salvation is? Thank you. Thank you. The sanctuary message. But how long was the last time you really studied it? When was the last time you started applying it? We can only gain a glimpse of God's design for us today in this sandbox. But notice, I'm going to bring up something that's going to open up a can of worms, and I know that. Because it's going to go directly against some Adventist theology. But it's not going to be my word, it's going to be prophet. Is that okay? All right. Just listen. It's coming up here. God designs, it's not this quote, it's coming up though. God designs that the message of redemption shall come to his people as the latter rain, for they are fast losing their connection with God. You see, the fact of the matter is they're trusting in men. They're glorifying men. And their strength is proportionate to the strength of their dependence. Yes. We are to know a whole lot more than we know at this present time. Yes. All right. You see, the fact of the matter is, by the almost complete rejection of the true sanctuary message, it has caused God's people to lose sight of the power of God unto salvation, resulting in victory over sin, because becoming sealed by in His grace and in sealed in His love, ever resting in Jesus and He in us by the power of God the Holy Spirit. Let me make it clear. Perfection in Christ will never be accomplished. Perfection in Christ will never be accomplished in God's people without complete, unreserved surrender to our Heavenly Father's sovereign will and our implicit cooperation to the work of our high priest in this great and typical day of atonement. We must get this clear in our minds. If nothing else is remembered, get it straight. He will never attain it unless you do it God's way. You see, the vast majority of Christians, professed Christians, whether they be Baptist, Methodist, Episcopalian, even Roman Catholics, and yes, Seventh-day Adventists, believe in a complete finished atonement at the cross. Yet this is found to be completely unbiblical and a subtle deception of Satan. Unveiled clearly when we see in the light of the sandbox of our salvation, God proclaims through his prophet a very important thing. And let's get it right. Important truths concerning the atonement are taught by the typical service. A substitute was accepted in the sinner step. But the sin was not canceled by the blood of the victim. And that is true in the antitype as it 
was in the type, the blood of Jesus Christ does not cancel the sin. Don't get this screwed up. It covers the sin. Let's go on. A means was thus provided by which it was transferred into the sanctuary. By offering, by the offering of blood, the sinner acknowledged the authority of the law, confessed his guilt in transgression, and expressed his desire for pardon through faith in a Redeemer to come. And yes, Christ died on that cross for us. But now he's our high priest and he's taken his blood into the heavenly sanctuary and he's saying, Father, my blood covers these sins. My blood authorizes me to take these sins out of this man, this woman's account, and place it on the scapegoat. And I want to do it because he has faith in the Redeemer. Amen. You see, it's something very interesting we need to bring to our brothers and sisters in the Baptist, Methodist, and so on and so forth. See, when we don't know the sanctuary message, we can't bring this to them. Sure. But when we know the sanctuary message, we can bring them something and they will go, huh? Mm -hmm. Listen to this. By the bringing of that offering and claiming, they've acknowledged the authority of the law. Yet he was not entirely what? released from the condemnation of the law. You see, today we claim the blood of Jesus Christ, looking forward to our faithful and high priest to complete the work. And anyone, anyone who claims the blood of Jesus Christ on Calvary is also saying that God's holy law is valid. You can't claim the blood for your sin without acknowledging the law it is still valid. It causes a problem. The blood covering our sins is transferred to the heavenly sanctuary and God is wanting to put it on the scapegoat. And as long as we by faith cooperating with the work of the Day of Atonement in our daily lives, we will, not maybe, not could be, we will receive the benefits. Without the atypical Day of Atonement performed on our behalf, it is impossible to be made perfect in Christ. As Seventh-day Adventists, we must clearly and distinctly be presenting present truth which is not only Christ's death for our sin but his work of removal of that sin. Amen. Amen. Oh, I'm looking forward to that removal of sin because I'm getting tired of that demon of the devil himself saying, you remember who you really were? Mm -hmm. And I'm saying every day, you may think that's what I was, but I'm under the blood, and my Savior sees only my, my God, my Father, sees only the blood of my Savior. Amen. Only sees my Savior's life. He doesn't see me anymore. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. I can trust that kind of a Father. I can trust that kind of a father. But do we? Oh, Pastor Combat was correct last night. We got seven excuses, and boy, I tell you, we love you. It just shows that we may like present truth. 
We may acknowledge present truth as truth, but we haven't assimilated one word. We gotta start assimilating, folks. You see, there's too many pigs in the Adventist church. Hmm. What does a pig do when he eats? He goes after just about anything he can get his mouth on, and he never chews it twice. Hmm. Now a cow, there's a few cows in the church. Praise the Lord for the cows. <laughs> because they'll chew on that word, and they'll bring it up and they'll chew on it again. And they'll chew on it again, and boy, that's masticated. You get down there good. <laughs> and then it's assimilated. And what does that cow do? Mm -hmm. He gets bigger and bigger. You want your face to get bigger? You want your face to be real? You gotta assimilate. Don't be a hog. Be a cow. I know you'll remember that. <laughs> I can see your face. God can see him too. He knows. When you start smiling about those things, you're saying, yeah, how many times have I listened to a sermon and said, boy, that was a good sermon. And by the time you got off the car, you don't remember what the, thing, what the pastor said. <laughs> you, know, you took a blind sinner. Didn't even know he misquoted the Bible. <laughs> Now, we misquote a lot of things in the Bible of Seventh-day Adventist because we think we know what's in there. Paul makes it clear. Now all these things happen unto them for examples. And they are written for our admonition upon the whom the ends of the world come. You see, Paul wasn't talking to the Corinthians here. How many believe that the world is coming fast to an end? Yes, sir. Well, we got about 40%. We got a problem, Pastor. You see, the sanctuary message is for you. It's for me. And if we don't start learning how to assimilate what God was trying to tell those slaves coming out of Egypt, because see, we're slaves too. And we come out of Egypt. The problem is, there's only one difference with the children of the story of the children of Israel in the story of the last generation. We're talking about this coming up. And it's not on my notes, but I'm going to put it in. You see, there's only one difference between the children of Israel and us, the last generation. You see, the children of Israel was allowed to enter Canaan not because they had attained what God was looking for, but because the Canaanites had filled their cup. Guess what? That ain't happening with the last generation. If you aren't perfectly reproducing the character of Christ in you, you are not going to Canaan. There's no 99.9999% getting it. It's got to be 100 Because when the real test starts coming, when the real test starts coming, Father, help us realize what this really means. And the test really comes. And there is not a thing in your cupboards. And you can't go buy and you can't sell and you are hungry. Are you going to trust your Heavenly Father? Because the 
Bible says clearly and teaches clearly that not one of the sealed will die after the close of probation. There's a reason why. Because if Satan was allowed to snuff out one of the sealed, just one, one takes one, Satan wins. That's taught in the sanctuary message. Because when my Savior says, he that is just, let him be just. He takes all of my sin, he takes all of your sin, and he puts it on Satan. Just like that high priest out there in the wilderness put the sins of the camp on that scapegoat. Christ is putting on Satan. And then the scripture says, a fit man takes a hold of that goat. There's only one fit man that can do this job, and that's my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He puts the sin on the goat. And then he lays hold of Satan. And for the space of just short of one year, Satan is going to try to get loose and kill one of God's people because he knows if he can just do that, he's won. But my God is stronger than my devil. That old devil, he just, oh, he loves to get somebody. The fifth man has got a hope. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on with that faith. Verse 12. Wherefore, let him. Who's the him? From the ends of the world come. That thinketh, he stands. That thinketh, he stands. Take what? Take heed. What's Paul talking about? He's talking about the sanctuary message. You read chapter 10 from 1 through 12. 2 through 9 is all about the sanctuary message. And then Paul says, take heed lest you fall. The type Well, the example is given to us to explain what God's work in man's behalf and in heaven is all about. You see, remember, without the antipical day of atonement performed in our behalf, it is impossible to be made perfect in Christ. Today, this day, this day, Day, this antitypical day of atonement, we are living in. Are we cooperating with our high priest? Are we faithfully, by faith, look with expectancy for the purging of all of our sins? Do we say with Paul, I die? I told my members, don't you dare even get out of bed before you die. <laughs> you can go out of bed. But before you go out of bed, you say good morning to your wife or your husband. You go out of bed, your knees hit the floor, and you die of a heart attack. Not what you're going to do. Make your life under the blood as soon as you know your conscience. When you are awake, you say, Lord, thank you for this day. I need your blood again. I need to die again, Lord. And when you roll out of bed and go into your devotions, that's the personal time. But don't you even say good morning to your spouse until you've been under your blood. Just roll 
why there's sometimes that spouse who, if, if, if that spouse is not under the blood, oh, Jesus is not coming out of you. <laughs> and Jesus has got to come out of you not 10% of the time, not 20% of the time, not 80% of the time, but 100% of the time. You said I do before God. Now you got to stay under the blood because that person is not under the blood. God will use to perfect your character to the nth degree. And guess what? The more Christ comes out of you, there's going to be one, one of two things going to happen. Either that spouse is going to run for the hills or, he's going to, or he or she's going to be converted. It's going to be one or the other. Because yes, it's not going to be any other way. Think about it. Think about it. You see, we must never, we must never stagger at the promise. We have to be fully persuaded. And I believe we have seen this morning there's a possibility that maybe we haven't been fully persuaded. Because like Pastor said last night, we got a lot of excuses. And that just shows you're not fully persuaded of the present truth. You haven't assimilated the present truth. Oh, you know what present truth is because you go to a present truth church. All that does is make you more deserving of hell if you don't assimilate it. We must never stagger at the promise of God that Jesus is able to perform in this, our lives, this weak, feeble, mentally challenged, physically handicapped, spiritually dwarfed human beings. You see, Abraham said, yes, Lord, I know you can perform it. I'm dead. My wife is dead, but we are going to have a child. <laughs> That's what we're talking about here. Yeah. And when we die completely, yeah. we can never stagger at the promise. God said it. I believe it. That sells it for me. fact of the matter is God has said the honor of me the honor of my son will be brought out in this last generation with the perfection of my people but shall we seek perfection in God's way or man's policies or ideas. Let us never forget the admonition. Reviewing it again. Those who by faith follow Jesus in the great work of atonement. Early writings, page 56. Put it down. I didn't put it in my notes. I didn't put it on the screen. But God told me to tell you right now. You see, this is the reality. Okay? In 1844, October 22, when Christ moved from the holy place into the most holy place, the prophet says in vision, she saw the Father go. Then she saw Christ get up off the throne. And as he moved to the most holy place, she saw, she saw God's people some of them, some of them, get up and start to follow. And Christ said, no, not yet. Wait. 
By faith, follow me. Standing here in the courtyard, are you by faith, moment by moment, in the throne room? I've not even told my wife this. The first time I preached this sermon, or one similar to it, my ex-wife was listening. We came home that Sabbath, and she says, you mean to tell me that that's what you believe? I said, yes. You see, early writings makes it very clear that everyone that doesn't follow Christ into the most holy place is still in the holy place. Mm -hmm. And she sees as it were Satan. Mm -hmm. And everyone who stays in the holy place is not praying to Jesus Christ, is not praying to the Father, but is praying to Satan. And there are a lot of Seventh-day Adventists who do not accept the sanctuary message, who have not applied it in their lives, and they are worshiping Satan, going to church on Sabbath. There's a whole lot of Seventh-day Adventists that are going to receive the mark of the beast and never go to church on Sunday. Because they never died to self. My ex-wife said, I can't handle that, and she left. Less than a year later, she proclaims herself as an agnostic. Doesn't want to hear a word of God being mentioned, but she'll take his name in vain. She told me a couple months ago, all things, everything comes out of my mouth is about the Lord. But she couldn't handle it. She said, don't, I don't want to hear it. I said, I'm sorry, that's all I can talk about. <laughs> you see, since the last time we talked, my son was told that he has ankylosing spondylitis just like me. He's in a lot of pain. Pray for him. His name is Seth. But because of bitterness and hatred to my God, mm -hmm. the herbal medications that are giving me the opportunity to stand before you and by God's grace stand in straighter than last year. Amen. <laughs>
and say, Lord, forgive me. Yes. By the power of the Holy Spirit, you keep going after. Isaiah 40. I got to go there. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got to get, I got to give you guys some help. God gave this to me. I got to give it to you. Isaiah 42. I got to take my glasses off, otherwise I can't see my Bible. I can't see you, but I can see my Bible now. <laughs> All right. Isaiah 42, verse 16. Pray this for any of your spouses, any of your children, any of your grandchildren. It doesn't matter. Whoever you're praying, intercede the blood. I will bring the blind by a way that you not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. Crooked things straight. These things will I do unto them.
I can have Ten Commandments hanging on my wall in my living room. Does this mean any good? Keep. Misconception or rejection for the sanctuary message, number 10. Number nine, no, yeah, no, number 11. Having only a theoretical knowledge, not assimilating present truth into our innermost private life. And number 10, number 12. These are not in any correct order, so don't make that mistake. Last one that I wrote down. The redefining of prophecies that God has given us as his people. So what's the solution? What's the solution? There's only one. The pastor said it one way, I'm going to say it another way. So as many times we're already today. You see, it is impossible to be perfect, to get perfection in Christ, unless you have the solution. Complete. Unreserved. Surrender to the Father's sovereign will destroys every and all barriers to your perfection. Daily cooperating with our high priest, we must lay hold with spiritual violence our salvation, assimilating present truth into our innermost parts of our lives. Let us daily, moment by moment, be living the words, have thine own way, God, in my life. Mold me, Father. Transform my character. Burn all the dross out of my life with your Holy Spirit. Burn it, Lord.
feel impressed right now. I, go ahead and keep playing. I feel impressed right now. There's someone here that, that needs to make a commitment. They may not understand everything, but they know one thing, that they are not following Christ all the way. This song is clear. We need to make a commitment. Say, Lord, all the way. All the way. Your way. I want to participate. I want to cooperate in this day of atonement. Can you raise your hand and say, yes, Lord. message of redemption that brings forth the latter rain. Lord, we need to get wet with your Holy Spirit. Fill us. Lord, be with each of these next pre preachers coming forward. Anoint them, Lord, with your Holy Spirit. For none of us want to leave here the same. We want to come off this mountain being living channels of light for your glory and your honor. And nothing short of that we pray. In Jesus' name and for your sake. Amen. amen.
Je 